Welcome back to a Friday Night Lights after a long hiatus. It's been some years. I am your host, Ryanster. We are at Studio 28, a.k.a. The Dog and Pony Show TV, a.k.a. Anderson Camera. We're here in the spot to be. If you've been here in Chicago, you know what it is. It's always getting updated. It always looks brand new. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, pandemic's been over. All that's been over. It will be unveiled, whatever. But uh, we're back in the studio. We're getting this thing going. 100 days of summer. We're going to be in here twice a month. Uh, I believe was it every sec Sky was every second and fourth uh, Friday we will be in here filming and whenever we bring guests they are welcome to bring guests and if guests want to come just shoot us a DM and let's see what we can make happen but our first guest back goes by the name of Chase how you doing Chase man I'm good bro how you feeling all right I'm all right get some more sleep I know you get some more sleep as well hey man I'm uh, currently being uh how can I say tortured I'm getting my butt whipped it feels like I am a uh... Punching bag, and I'm getting hit by Mike Tyson, which is my current infant right now. That's, I'll say that's the definition of fatherhood. So, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the club. Uh, I am still a fairly new member. Scotty is Scotty is a veteran in the game. So, he's 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 got their bags packed already by the door. So, uh, you know, it's all good to go. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure Scotty's just in tears on the way here. Yeah. We gotta help yeah okay. Oh, hey, Scotty's gonna be getting a lot of calls. I Man, a look. lot of calls. There we go. There we go. As you can see, we're in the studio. They're watching it live on the other side of the room. Yes, sir. If you want to come, like I said, come to the room. Come DM us at the Dog and Pony Show TV or Scotty underscore Rocks or Anderson underscore Camera. So. We're about to get into it with Chase. He has his drink right now, which is in the early stages. It goes by Pilt Persuasion. As you can see, one is already gone. Maybe two will be gone by the end of this interview. Um, drink, liquor brand. Uh, we met not too long ago, maybe like a month ago. Something like that. Like that. Uh, came yeah. in here. Uh, shout out to Shelly. Uh, they did a spot right there um, in the studio. Uh, what do you call that show? Opening the fridge? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You should drink this. You should drink you this. Should drink this. Yeah. Big shout out. Link. So link. So link. link at the bottom. Right. Link right here. Uh, you should drink this. Um, no, but he came through, uh, brought the pill persuasion. Uh, we brought a few mason jars last time. Uh, absolutely got killed. Uh, it tastes amazing. It tastes like juice. And then he started explaining to us what was in it, how he broke it down, and I... I truly couldn't believe it because just of the taste, especially of how much alcohol you were using. Uh, so before we just talk about the drink, let's talk about the, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, I don't want to get the government, but I just go by Chase Bank or AKA Craven, Craven the Hunter, before Craven, you know, the, needless to say. Anyways, my name is Chase with two A's. Um, originally from the west side of Chicago, born and raised here. Then we move out to the west suburbs, long story short. Um, and man, you know, I feel like I've been in life, you go through so many different changes. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I feel like when I was in college, I would ask my professors all the time, like, Hey, what do I want? What, how did you find out what you wanted to do after, you know what I'm saying? You graduated. And the biggest set of advice I've ever gotten was you never know. It changes on a daily basis. Nice. Right. Like, um, you might know what you want to eat for lunch, but by the time you walk out of your door, your office, or wherever it is that you're headed to, your, your taste buds might change like that. So the fact of the matter is you never know what you wanted to do. My graduate advisor, he legitimately worked at NASA. He had his own business. He was a project manager, and then he was a professor. So the biggest thing he told me was, hey, look, you just go wherever your heart is. And whenever you find out what it is that you want to do, you pursue it. But you pursue it viciously. Like, you don't have step nothing. No, that's 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 very great. And also reminds me of it also reminds me of someone I don't know who it is that said um like when I like you said chase viciously. Somebody says like oh you think you have a lot of time in life, but really you don't. So it's best to get good at those one or few things and chase it viciously because if you're gonna chase something half ass over here, halfway over there, halfway over there, you're not gonna be satisfied because you didn't go all the way. Exactly, you're not gonna get anything done. And you're stepping into a realm that other people are already in, been in, trying to get into. So it's not like, oh, I'm the only one that's about to do this. Like, no, people are doing it, trying to do it, have done it. Yeah. All that stuff. All right, so now you got the inspiration. Correct. What I like to hear from creatives, artists, business people, entrepreneurs is what was that turning point? What was the spark in the head to be like, okay, this is it, I got something, I'm gonna take it all the way. Great question. So I feel like literally post-grad, 
me and my best friend, we were just on a um, just talking on the phone randomly as we normally always do. And we was having a conversation of like, you know, this nine to five ain't working. I hate it here. This isn't it. I didn't stress through all these years of school to get to where I am today. And we started talking like, hey, so what if we, I don't know, came up with a, a business that delivered alcohol to people? And then, you know, I don't know, we talked ourselves out of it because we were like, mm, it won't work. But come to find out, mm, years it works. later, <laughs> it works. It, <laughs> it works. works. And then came, I think it was Grizzly or something like that, that came out that actually makes that a thing. Then um, you got Uber Eats. I was about to say, the, the major the major corporation ended up doing that, but you're saying Grizzly was the first one you saw that, that took that idea and ran with it? That promoted it. So then I was like, okay, whatever the next big idea I have, I have to stick with it. Because if I had that idea and I didn't do anything with it or capitalize on it, I know somebody else will. Because you put it out in the universe, right? Somebody else snatched that somebody snatched else it up right out of you. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, no. This is part, it's, 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 uh, part of the twenty-two immutable laws of marketing. The first is be the first. Who was the first person that thought of brand marketing? We should all know this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm terrible yeah, with no, history. I, I, no, I, I, know, I know where he's going. <laughs> what? What? He, no, 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 Charles Lindbergh. Yeah, hey, really? No, but but what was? Who was the second person? Who was the second person to fly? No one, no one knows. Okay, <laughs> no one cares. Let me change the question. Who was the first woman to fly the airplane? Amelia Earhart. Right. She was the second person. Okay. First but she person. Was, but she was the first, first woman, woman, though. Call the Kleenex. Rollerblade. 22 immutable laws of marketing. You looked it up. That's the first one. Be first to market. Got it. Your idea is already Because she wasn't that shady. She the first to do it, but in her first to market. lane. Yeah. She was the first to market. woman to do it. Yeah. Because she wasn't that shady the first to do it, but in her lane, she was the first woman to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's solid. So, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no they no, know no. that. I, well, that. That was from the bleachers. And, uh, <laughs> that's what we need. Us. <laughs> no, but the, to go out that point, it's like, yes, yeah, like you put an idea out there. It's like, man, they can get snatched so fast. Like me with like song lyrics, like yeah. I write song lyrics, like, and then I'm like, ah, whatever. And like maybe months later, a year later, I'll be like, someone says it. Then I'm like, I could, you know, not mad or anything, but over time, you can see how it could frustrate someone if they don't. Mm-hmm keep going if they don't follow through with their idea of what they want to do exactly so fast forward again um i think it was just a random family barbecue that we had and somebody was like hey chase um can you make us a drink and i was like okay sure so i just used whatever i found in the refrigerator and made something that was like i don't know in a nice little gallon tub and quite literally probably i made it and maybe like 15 minutes later it was gone so I was, I was just playing around with stuff. So at that point, I was like, okay, let me actually get some ingredients that I actually like and so let me see where it can go. So the birth came of Pill Persuasion, where I actually got the ingredients that I wanted. And it took me probably, I would say, like two years to perfect that one specifically because um, I'm not going to divulge everything that's in there. But it's a, a very nice amount of alcohol that's in there. And it was just my biggest pet peeve is I want people to drink it and drink it so much that you don't taste the alcohol. It's refreshing. And by the time you get done with it, you want more. As you can see, I am already drinking more. And the thing I, <laughs> the thing, the, the thing I like about it, though, is like strong, uh, strong drinks that are mixed. Sometimes you'll smell like the alcohol going in. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes it bothers people to smell that. But me drinking it, I don't smell that. I just really smell more of the juice, I guess right. you could say. Of it, there's no um, like aftertaste. Like Chicagoans don't like what a malur tastes like. You know that is the worst aftertaste in the world. Absolutely not. But there's no aftertaste. There's no bitterness. It's just it's just smooth. So the recipe will be down below in the comments. <laughs> uh, but no, that's that's great. Now in these two years, how drunk did you get? Fa failing, <laughs> failing to make the concoction, or have you ever made it and been like, oh, this is absolutely horrible. It's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> you don't necessarily get it right on the right on the first time, you know. Um, you but you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Did you wake so, up? On the, you wake up on the kitchen floor or the couch one of these days, like oh that concoction did not work. No, no lie. It was a. Uh, it was probably like the third one I did. I just like I fell asleep at the kitchen table. I was just like, jeez, hands down. I, then I woke up like, how long have I been here? <laughs> and uh, it was quite hilarious as well. It was like when I was still living with my parents, my mom walked in and just laughed at me and walked out. She's like. Yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Have your parents tasted the, the pill persuasion? So my dad actually doesn't drink at all. But my mom, whenever I make a batch of it, she'll take like, a, I'll say a liter full and it's, she she demolishes it. Like, take it to her church friends and all that. Hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus drank wine on the last yeah, supper. There, there so, you go, there you go, there you go. 
they can drink uh, oh, persuasion yeah, at brunch yeah, yeah. at the church. It's okay. Yeah, you got a little bit. Got to a church, probably a small church, it's full of people. <laughs> Pass around the Pope persuasion. Hey, where's mom? And then they cut out to the church and she's out in the park. <laughs> 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 okay, so it's commercial. There we we're, sh- we're, shoot- we're, shoot- we're shooting it in it. I got you. Um, all right, so two years go by. You finally hit that Eureka. You know, you're like, oh, okay, I got, I got the drink ready. Now, in your mind, you got the drink ready. Do you like, because you've never done this before. No. Do you like freak out a little bit? Because you know, entrepreneurs, creatives, they get to a certain point, or we're we're like we're like we get to a spot. We're gonna get there. We don't know how we're gonna get there, but when we get there, we're gonna get there. Exactly. When we get there, you're like, okay, damn, like I got here and I've accomplished this, but what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Now you got to go to the next level of the game. So what did you do once you hit the jackpot of that and was like, okay, what's next? Ironically enough, after I had like the whole thing, like the whole batch and, and formula down, I actually quit. Because uh, I started doing like research on, all right, what do I need to do to be a a real brand of alcohol to really get it out there? So I started looking into all the the little tidbits of what it actually really took, and I got intimidated. Like it was a lot of money that's in and in, that's involved with it. You have to go here to there to everywhere for you to do anything, and it's just like all these laws that you have to pass. I saw it, I got intimidated, and it, quite literally, I quit. But I, how long did you quit for? Man, that was uh probably like from 2020 to 2023. Oh, so good solid three years at least. Legit. Like cause Pan- uh, pandemic didn't help us. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> I drank a lot, but I got nothing accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, I quit. So but uh I feel like my turnkey moment was in 2023 where I came across in a potential investor that actually flaked on me. So he had mentioned, Oh, hey, I'm I'm here to help you, I wanna help you. And um, when push came to shove, he went ghost on me. Mm. But I can tell you right now, from when that happened, I appreciate you because everything you did got me to where I am today. So I thank you for pushing me to get me to the point of where I am. So we don't have to go any further, but I just want to thank you because had that not happened, I probably would not have put all the coins or all the marbles into the center of the table. And I did not say to myself, I don't care what happens further. I'm going to do this. And then you say, drop and give me 50. Uh, <laughs> no, hey. No, hey, that's absolutely fire because a lot of creatives, big artists, you know, people like yourself, is that moment of like failure, yeah. which really turns you. You know, like, yeah, you hear a lot of moments, oh, this successful thing happened. Like, no, it's about like you getting beat and like, man, am I really meant to do this? And like you said, it just turned that fire on you. Sometimes we all have, we have, we have like a little campfire you know but if you don't add that Great. gasoline to it mm-hmm. it ain't gonna go where it's gonna fizzle out by midnight yeah but i like that you kept your fire going all right so now boom you said that to yourself yep still don't know where you're going where are you going after that well where i'm going right now let's see i got my first initial investment and it was able to get me to let's just say get my drink professionally made so i'm rounding out finishing that out and next would be to uh, going to manufacturing and so do like before, a small okay, batch. So before that, your drink professionally made. Yes. You told them everything that you did. Like you told them the recipe. Like oh, I added this. The home bar. recipe, yeah. So they have to find a way to make your same drink and not use the same things you made. Or like, how does how does I mean how does that work? Because they can't. You can't be like oh, use this brand and this brand and this brand because now that becomes a whole difficult situation. Exactly. So how that works is so they do have to supplement what I put in there because they can't use the exact same thing. So spot on. So I tell them my home recipe. And so when they go back and they'll break it down in the lab, they'll look into uh, what they could substitute, what I use certain things for to remake it. So that way I could own that for them. Were you worried that the, the drink that you made, were you worried that it would like not have been as good? They go to left field with it. Were you kind of scared like to leave it in somebody else's hands pretty much? Absolutely. Because, um, I mean, and Shelly, you can speak to this, but, you know, when you make a drink, not everybody's drink is going to be your drink. So when we went through that process, I was very nervous because uh, it's a total of three samples that I did with them. And the first one was like absolutely way off. I was like, hey, I don't know what you're doing back there, but this ain't it. Um, Second one, I was like, okay, we're getting closer. Then the third one, it was like, okay, that's it. There we go. There we go. All right. Yeah. So now you got the drink. 
Yes, sir. What is the urine? I think we talked about uh, the cans being made. This yes. is going to be so. This is pretty much prototype, you know, mason jar. Uh, but next is going to be an actual can. Yes, sir. But how to, how big of how big of a can are we talking about? So probably some take the label just like that, just like this. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With yeah. All that? Okay. Uh, Twelve ounce tall boy is what I'm aiming for. So uh, to get a nice little feel for it. So that's exactly what I'm kind of going for. Um, I really want to do a six pack because I want to undercut all the other RTDs that's out there because the majority of those do four packs. So I want to, yes, RT. <laughs> whoa, 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 no diddy. Oh, no RTD, kidding. my bad, sorry. Uh, RTD is a ready to drink. So it's a, mm. it's a whole category of alcohol. And it's like... Learn something it, new every day. See, I know that. Hey, RTD. right. My bad. Sorry. Hey, give me your RTD. Yeah, okay. Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, came in, Yeah, that's RTD. Exactly. Yeah, right, yeah, came in Jack. Okay. Mm-hmm. And okay. they, they're... Cl- yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? RTD, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Why, why did we ever go to all that trouble to get all those different models? Right? Right? Yeah, he's feeling like Jack already. No, okay. <laughs> um, so not so okay. So they sell them in four. So your thing is selling in six. Absolutely. Reason being, uh, everybody else sells them in four. If I sell mine in six, the ABV is higher, and of course, you taste no alcohol. It's more refreshing. So I think that is legit my lane to move because. And now we're going back to twenty-two uh, immutable laws of marketing. You're not. You're going you're to be the first to do something in that lane with that drink. Yeah. That they're not doing. And I know we talked ideas. We talked about. Uh, well, I'd like to say, you know, your your um, Pill Persuasion is going to be a sponsor of Eyes on the Prize, a competition that happens all around the U.S. Uh, Shout out to Ram, sir. Thank you. Um, and like I said, like, big artists get these drink sponsors or, you know, endorsements, whatever. But, like, independent local people, like, they, they don't really feel that love and stuff. So the fact that we're going to be able to take this drink and take it across America and if you win Eyes on the Prize, you know, you get yourself a couple six packs of it when we get the cans going. Yes, sir. And all that. So. No, I'm 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 very excited uh, for it. So, how soon do you think these cans will be done and on the move? So my absolute goal is to have to be in production and actually have form of sales by August of this year. So that's my there goal. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Let's get it. So been working towards it for quite a long time, and you know, ironically enough, I just had a little girl too. So I feel like I'll, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I feel like a lot of Family members or friends who were like, oh, you know, you're going to have to tend to the family and you have to do this, that, and the third, and that's going to have to wait. But my wife, I have to tell you, she's a real one. I love her to death because she literally said, no, I'm going to push you and support you to do this. Because at the end of the day, it's like, poetry stamps. right? How can I encourage my daughter to chase her dreams if I never decided to chase my Amazing. Daughter? I just saw something the other day about that. It's like, um, actually, my uh, shout out to my passion park, David Lopez. <laughs> He uh he said in an interview he's like I he's like I want my kids to see me chasing my dreams and goals because it will encourage them and I love that and just a fellow entrepreneur like yeah I mean why are we gonna put anything on the back burner right you know because I'm sure we all know people your family friends stories you heard whatever people like they put it on the back burner then they blink and then five years gone by ten years gone by fifteen years oh coulda woulda been we all know that guy at the bar all that stuff mm-hmm. you know like you know what I'm saying no disrespect to them or anything but like no like. The time is now. You get to it now. Yeah, yeah, take your days off if you need to mentally, whatever. But, like, no. Get to it. Get to where you're going. And, yeah, are you going to have less sleep? Yeah. Are you going to be a little tight on things? Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, the journey is worth it. The road is worth it. Enjoy it. I can't wait to see this on shelf. I can't wait to see it in the can, honestly. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Besides, you already know. I already told you, you have an unlimited oh, supply of you, via me. And so I got you. Like the Gatorade coolers at, like, uh, <laughs> sports games? I'm going to have a Gatorade cooler. <laughs> in your <laughs> house. Like, hey. Hey, <laughs> uh, like Mr. Deeds, he had a Kool Aid fountain and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. have a, pill, a pill persuasion fountain. I'm not encouraging you to drink all the time, but when no, you no, feel, no, no. we're not feeling like it. Wanna... It's right there. No, like... It's right there. Right there. All right. So uh, to wrap this interview up, uh, I would like you to. This is a new thing I want to do. I thought of it on the way here. Yeah. The show is called Friday Night Lights. Yes, sir. Uh, you're not ours, but this is different. I can probably put you under a different thing. In a few years, you're under some Friday Night Lights. It could be wherever, a venue, a stadium for your drink. You know what I'm saying? You're in front of a crowd. Let's say, let's say Pill Persuasion throws like a music, a day music festival, a house of blues or something, sponsored by Pill Persuasion. Featuring Rhymester. Thank you. That's what I wanted. 
But then now is the time for you to go in front of this crowd. It's Friday night. Lights are up and, you know, bright. All these people are looking at you. What would you tell them about Pill Persuasion and how you got there? And remember, we're envisioning you already Pill Persuasion across the U.S. So you're already up here already. Yeah. What would you tell a person looking at you with this dream? I would tell them that if you don't see it for yourself, nobody will. That, like, I want you to truly enjoy every element of yourself while you're drinking this because this was was designed to be absolutely authentic of who I am. I can't sit down and have a drink with everybody in the world, but I feel like this is my means of being able to connect to you. So whatever it is that you can do in life that you feel is authentic to you, do not let anybody tell you no, do that shit. Bam. You heard it here on Friday Night Lights. This is Chase. Where can they where can they where can they follow Pill Persuasion at? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you can follow uh, Pill Persuasion on Instagram as of right now. That's the easiest, quickest way to get towards or in contact with me at Pill Persuasion on Instagram. As we pour up some more Pill Persuasion. <laughs> this is Chase. I am Ryan from Friday Night Lights. We'll be back with our next guest. Give it up for Chase. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff.